they give us a diagram here and they give us the givens which basically are hints or clues so when you see the givens that's a hint and then they tell us what you uh, they want us to prove okay so let's see what we have here we have that uh, wy equals xz so that means this whole length here is equal to this whole length here okay so I put some brackets just to show that but what we want to prove is that WX is equal to YZ okay so my suggestion to you is that when you're doing these proofs try to jump into that diagram and mark it up so that you can see what's happening so you don't have to remember it you know while you're doing the proof you can just visually look at it now what you can see is that these two segments that are congruent or equal they overlap and what they share in common is this segment here XY so if those two things are equal and then we subtract off something that's in common between those two segments, we should be left with uh, what's left over, which is WX is then equal to YZ. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's go through the proof step by step. Now we're doing two column proofs. There's different types of proofs like paragraph proofs and flow proofs. But in this uh, example, I'm just gonna do a two column proof. Okay, the statements on this side and the reasons or the justifications on the right side. So generally, I usually write the givens first just to kind of uh, get that out of the way and it just gets me started with the, the proof, kind of gets me going. And whatever you're trying to prove, that's always going to be the, the last step, okay? So what we're trying to do is fill in those intermediate or in-between steps, okay? So you're with me so far? Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to state that WX plus XY equals WY, okay? So WX plus XY equals WY. And over here we also have xy plus yz equals xz. So xy plus yz equals xz. And what's the reason for that? Well, that's called the segment addition postulate. The two segments added together add up to the whole segment. Okay, so that's the idea there with the segment addition postulate. So that's our reason. And notice that I combine these into the same step because they have the same reason. So segment addition postulate, I'm just gonna abbreviate here. Okay, now step number three, what I'm gonna do, and this might seem a little bit uh, obvious, but it's good to state it anyways, and that's that XY, segment XY, is equal to segment XY. Okay, and how do I know that? Well, that's called the reflexive property. Reflexive is like looking in a mirror, you see your reflection, you're the same height in the mirror as you are in real life, right? So that's called the reflexive property, this XY is equal to itself, and you'll see why that we're gonna do that in a minute or use that in a minute. And then step number four, what we're gonna do is we're gonna state that, and follow me on this one. So sometimes what we're doing is we're getting information from the diagram, sometimes we're getting information from the givens, and then sometimes we're actually using previous steps in our proof, okay? So for example here, see WY? See how it equals WX plus XY? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right there, okay? And do you know what the reason is for that? And then also for this one, XZ, See how it equals XY plus YZ? So I'm gonna put that right there. So what allows me to do that? Do you know the answer to that? Well, that's called substitution. And a lot of these proofs, you're gonna be using the property of substitution. If two things are equal, it's just like a substitute teacher. If your math teacher isn't there one day because they're off, oftentimes they have a substitute math teacher and they just swap them out, right? So that's just a little funny way of remembering, okay? So, but basically what we have now is we did a substitution since the two quantities were equal, we replaced one with the other, and that brought us to this step right here. So this was substitution, substitution. Okay, now notice that we have an XY on both sides of the equal sign, right? So let's go ahead and jump to step number five, which is what we're trying to prove, and that's that WX equals YZ. Now, how was I able to eliminate the x, y on both sides of this equation? Well, that's called the subtraction property of equality. Just like in algebra, when you subtracted nine from the left side and nine from the right side, it keeps the equation balanced. It's the same thing here. We're subtracting x, y from both sides of the equation, so it keeps it balanced. And that's called the subtraction property of equality. I'm just abbreviating, okay, but you can write it out. Subtraction property of equality. If you do the same thing to both sides, subtraction, uh, is still gonna be equal. And that's what we were trying to prove, so that's our last step, so we've completed it. And again, going back to this step, where we stated that xy equals xy, it's kinda obvious, but because we're subtracting the same thing from both sides, it's just good to say that you know it's equal to itself, so when we go to subtract it from both sides, uh, we're doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. So, 
you could have made this proof maybe a little bit longer or maybe even a little bit shorter by you know possibly leaving out some of these steps but it doesn't hurt to just take tiny tiny steps a lot of times when students are first getting into these proofs they want to just jump right from the beginning to the end and one step or two steps and you really want to break it down into smaller steps okay just like um, you know really baby steps like that so I hope this helps you to understand how to do just a basic proof I'm gonna have some more uh, videos like this talking about beginning proofs so go ahead and check those out to get more familiar with how to do these uh, geometry proofs subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you in the future videos I'll talk to you soon